Hey, it's Gabe with Vitev, and today we're going to talk about how to select the best RO. Uh, we've been doing this for about 10 years now, and I've had a lot of conversations with people uh, as they're looking at, at the, kind of the pre-purchase research phase, uh, or after they have an RO, and now they're starting to second guess what they what they decided to do, or they want to fix a problem they didn't consider. Any number of questions and, and concerns that we've we've talked through, and what we've realized is that the market has changed significantly. There are a lot more options out there. There's a ton of different configurations and brands and, and all sorts of stuff that can be sort of distracting. And so we decided to kind of cut through the noise a bit and just focus on the main areas that you should be most concerned about as you're researching uh, an RO system for your home, or you're looking to solve maybe a problem that your current RO system has. So those main areas, and we'll timestamp them all down below so you can kind of cut through or jump to the ones that you're most concerned about or, or bookmark and come back later uh, as you're doing more research. But the main, the big areas, uh, the first is a membrane, right? All our, all our O's are built around the membrane. And so we wanna make sure that thing is performing well, which means we need to know what we're getting with a membrane and what we need to do to protect it on the front side, the pre-filtration aspect of an RO. We're gonna talk about uh, maintenance. That is a huge issue, maintenance, making sure it's as easy as possible to maintain, because if it's not, well, you don't maintain it and that's not good. We're gonna talk about um, the differences between clean water and healthy water. This has been the biggest conversation lately. We have a lot of people that have RO systems and go, I didn't realize I was taking everything out of the water. Can I put some good stuff back? And so it's good to consider that on the front end before you decide to purchase an RO. And then we're gonna talk about some of those, um, kind of the, the noise things, the bells and whistles, the, the extra stages and all the stuff that a lot of companies market, kind of rolls into the manufacturing and all those things. So how do you know what's a good stage, what's beneficial for you? and what's just complete waste of money and it doesn't even help provide you a better glass of water. So those are the main areas we're gonna talk through. Uh, we're gonna jump in, this is not gonna be a short video because RO systems are not simple, they're a little bit complicated. And if you're gonna make a decision like this, you kinda need to know what you're doing. So we're gonna be pretty thorough uh, and we're gonna jump in, start with the membrane. All right, so let's talk about the membrane because at the end of the day, the core of every RO system is the membrane. That's what they're built around. Anything on the front side of that membrane, any cartridges or pre-filters or whatever that are before the membrane are meant to protect it and make it able to work as well as it possibly can. And then anything after it, like stuff you know stacked on top, for instance, uh, are meant to improve the quality of the water. Typically taste, because a uh, 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 reverse osmosis water that's sitting in a tank for a while can taste kind of funky after a while. So they put polishing filters on, things to make the taste improve. But let's look at the membrane. So, the vast majority, overwhelming majority of membranes in at least the residential RO market are something called a thin film composite. We'll put some close-up images of this for you to look at, but it's almost like a cigar. It's a very, lots of uh, thin layers that are rolled together really tight, almost like a cigar, okay? And so what that allows is the osmosis process to function where only the clean water molecules are seeping through at a very slow rate, um, but that's what comes through. And at the end of the, the membrane, it splits and you get a wastewater and a, uh, a clean water line and on, a, on a cartridge like this, which we'll put more images in for you. That's what the two connectors are at the end. You got one clean and one wastewater, okay? So that's the way it's functioning. The way you can kind of tell membranes apart is they're, they're sort of categorized by gallons per day. You'll see GPD specified, and sometimes you'll see a 30 or a 50 or a 75 gallon per day production capability. Now, what that means, what you have to remember though, is it's not just calculating the water that you're drinking. It's calculating the total water used or, or um, total water produced, not produced, but required to get the water in the tank that you're gonna end up drinking, okay? So if your waste ratio, for instance, is 10 gallons of water for every one gallon of water created, and your tank is gonna hold about three gallons of water, you need 30 gallons of water production, 30 gallons of water used to, to get that three gallons of water in, in a drinkable state, okay? And 10 to one is not a, an abnormal ratio. It's pretty common actually, especially if you get a pretty inexpensive, just basic RO, you don't have a softener on your home uh, or some other things you can do to ROs to make it more efficient. That's a pretty baseline number. It could be even 12 to one in many cases. So we recommend about a 50 gallon a day membrane. That's, that's kind of a good baseline to start with. 75 is even better, okay? You'll find two different varieties. You'll find them that look like this, and the often will just sit in this, this cartridge or this housing that I mentioned a minute ago that we'll put another picture up here for you. Uh, you have to take this all apart and replace this part inside, re-lubricate it and stuff. 
when, you, when it comes time to change it. Or there are some that look like this that are just encapsulated. It just twists off and the whole cartridge comes out and you get rid of that when it's time to replace your membrane as well. There's a different couple of different varieties, which we'll talk more about in the maintenance side. But that's the, that's the RO membrane itself, okay? So 50 gallons a day is what we'd say to start with. 75, probably even better. Now, when it comes time to protecting the membrane, there's some things that we look at on the front end. So in this situation, there's three cartridges here. This could be either one sediment cartridge and two carbons, uh, or it could be two sediments and one carbon. It just kind of depends. Uh, this style has a sediment on the back and a carbon in the front, just to save a little bit of space. Um, but whatever you end up with, there's a couple things to, to really be considered and to think about. First, all sediment cartridges are pretty much the same. They're gonna be five microns, 10 microns, something like that. Uh, a pleated or a mesh, doesn't really matter. The, the goal of those, or the objective of those, purpose of those, is to eliminate the big particles in your water. The, the sediment, the sand, uh, rust, you know, the, big, the big pieces that would otherwise clog up a membrane, right? The, the pores on this essentially are so small, it does not take very much to clog that up. And it won't be a, it works great one day, it's clogged the next day. It's gonna be a gradual decrease in performance. And you won't even really notice it what it's gonna do first is just increase your waste ratio. So you're gonna send a whole lot more water down the drain than you will be getting into your tank. And you may not even notice it for a month or two until you look at your water bill and think, why are we using so much more water now? Well, it's because your membrane is getting clogged. Okay, so the sediment cartridge is the first step of that. It takes the big pieces out, the kind of low hanging fruit. Depending on the quality of your water, it will depend on how often that needs to be changed. But if it's new for you, if the system's new, I would check it the first couple of months and see how you're doing. And then you can get a gauge from that point. Secondly, and this one is even more important, it's the carbon cartridge, okay? Carbon, they're all gonna pretty much look about the same. Again, this is an encapsulated version. Um, but carbon is very important because it starts to take out chlorine, takes out some odors, takes out tastes. Uh, you can get gas through here. So if you have sulfur or something like that, hydrogen sulfide in your water, it could come through if the carbon's not really good. Um, but the biggest thing about carbon now is there's, there's two styles. There's activated carbon and there's something called catalytic carbon. Activated carbon is kind of the old school way. It was used when, when water companies were just using free chlorine or chlorine in our water supplies. Now over the last few years, they've really changed. They're using more of what's called chloramines. It's better for them, stays in the water longer. Uh, it's worse for us because it's harder to filter out and, it, and it's in our drinking water, right? And many people don't even know. We're not notified when that change takes place. The danger of chloramine is it will actually eat away this membrane and you'll end up with a degraded performance here, right? A lot more stuff able to come through than would otherwise be the case if it was fully intact. And again, if you don't get rid of that chloramine, you're now degrading your membrane and getting a, a water in your glass that's full of who knows what, pesticides or, or fluoride or whatever you're trying to get rid of, is now gonna be able to get through. So in order to get rid of that chloramine, you have to look for something called catalytic carbon. Very important that you find this. If the, if the company, the manufacturer doesn't specify it, contact them and ask. Um, there's a few really good brands. We like something called Nuchar. It's a wood-based carbon or a wood-based, um, uh, uh, yeah, it's carbon, but it's a wood-based product. Um, and it does phenomenally well against chloramine. You also wanna find it in a carbon block uh, setup. Block is much more efficient and effective at removing uh, the chemicals than a, uh, just a, a powder or a granulated filter would be, okay? Granulate is a lot cheaper, but it doesn't perform as well. So that's sediment and that's carbon. And there's one other thing to think about. ROs are meant to be used with a water softener. That's how it was first designed as a desalination platform. Okay, it takes salt out of water. In a home, they often work hand in hand. You put a water softener in and you have to do an RO system because it's the only thing you can take out the salt. If you put an RO system in without a softener, you need to at least give that some consideration. Okay, because it's gonna increase the lifespan of this thing immensely. You're gonna get way better production, way more efficiency out of the system. You're also gonna protect all your appliances and plumbing way better too. Uh, but if you don't wanna to go to the expense or you don't have the space or whatever of putting in a full water softener, there are some things like this. Uh, it's called a, a scale guard, it's one we use. It just sits like this inside of this cartridge and this plums into the feed line as a pre-filter, right? And this is essentially making water, just feeding this into a softened water. It's not salt, it's a different type of technology. Works phenomenally well. We haven't had any issues with that in years of us using it. 
Uh, but it'll maintain, what, what'll happen then is your sediment lasts longer and your membrane performs way better and will last that longer three to five year period as well uh, versus maybe having to replace it every year. So that's the stuff to think about. Soften your water if you can, make sure you're using a good sediment and you're checking it regularly to make sure it's water still flowing through. And then lastly, look for a catalytic carbon, not an activated carbon, okay? Catalytic is massively important. So on to the next step. All right, so let's talk about the efficiency of ROs, how you can, can improve that waste ratio so you're not sending as much water down the drain as an RO typically does, how you can improve the speed at which your tank fills up, uh, and just overall make the system operate at a much more cost-effective and time-effective uh, way. So the first thing to understand is ROs are kind of operating on a pressure balance situation. You've got your water coming in from the home at a certain PSI, which we looked to be, you know, preferably in that 60 to 65 PSI range. Um, so that's coming in here. And then you have a pressurized tank on the other end. And these typically sit when they're not filled with water at about five to seven PSI. There's a, and there's an air bladder in here, right? You need that because that's what forces the water out of the tank and out through the faucet. So there's this balance that happens that takes place between the, the water coming in and the water filling into the tank. As the water comes in and it goes through your sediment cartridge and your carbon cartridge, you don't have a whole lot of pressure loss. Pretty much the same thing's passing through here. But once it gets to the membrane, now you have a significant amount of pressure that's, that's, that's lost, okay? You're not sending 65 PSI over here anymore. It's, it's dramatically reduced. Part of that is because it's such a tight, you know, squeezed um, membrane in here that makes it hard for that water to come through. Only a little bit's passing through, right? So you're gonna lose a lot of pressure that way. The other issue is all RO or all membranes, like I've talked about previously, have two, two split flows out of this, right? You have your waistline, your wastewater coming out, the dirty water, and you have the clean water called the permeate water coming out of here. So um, what happens then is not only do you lose the pressure because this is so tight, but you're now also losing pressure because you have two streams coming out of this. And we only care about one, right? We only want to have the clean water. So it's whatever that clean water pressure line is, or the pressure in the clean water line is what's gonna be pushing into this tank. That's why it takes these things a long time to fill up. Uh, there's pressure pushing out, but there's also you know, a pretty slow flow coming through here. So how can we fix that? Well, the easiest way to do it is something called a permeate pump. This is one I have right here. And then there's one installed on the back side of this RO system as well. The way this works is, it's kind of an easy way to think about it. It's like a, um, it's like a pendulum. There's a diaphragm in the middle. You have your, your, uh, your brine water, your dirty water coming in one side and it goes out that same side, right? Kind of cycles through here. And then you have your clean water coming in and your clean water coming out. And down the middle is this, this divider, this, this uh, member, or, um, diaphragm in here. And it kind of clicks back and forth, almost like a pendulum. Okay, so it closes off, it shunts one side and won't allow any water to flow out while this one's working. And then it kicks back and allows water to come out here and shut this side off. The reason that works is because then it's maximizing the pressure into each respective side, okay? So you get much more pressure pushing the clean water into the tank, then you get a lot of pressure pushing the dirty water out of the system. Make sense? So we've just doubled whatever we can get into here by shutting off the drain line at the same time, because typically those be working simultaneously. So what that means is we can make that efficiency basically goes up about four times with one of these. Um, and your tanks are gonna fill two to three times faster, which means you can probably fill this tank in under an hour. Some of them will take two to three hours to fill up completely. And you're gonna significantly reduce your wastewater. Your, your 10 to one, 12 to one ratio can go down to like three to one pretty quick. Um, it's just a much better way to make your RO function. So if you're in the city and you have good water coming in and you just wanna increase how well this works, just add a permeate pump. They're not real easy to figure out how to install. It's kind of complicated with the directions and stuff on it. So if you haven't bought an RO system yet um, and you can get one that's, that comes pre-installed, that makes it way easier. Um, if you don't, call your manufacturer. You can just you can contact us and we can probably help you set it up that way as well. They're not very expensive. They'll pay for themselves really, really fast. Uh, and then the last thing, this is more for people who don't live in a city that have really steady high PSI coming into the house. If you're in a rural situation or you're on a well, uh, is to look for a booster pump. Booster pumps will basically take that maybe 45 PSI or 50 PSI that you have coming out of your well, and it'll boost it up to 60 or 65 and just shove a lot more pressure through here and make everything work, work better. Um, if you pair that with one of these, I mean, there's nothing you can do that will make it any better. 
that's kind of the perfect situation. So by all means, everybody should have one of these on their RO. It's just almost dumb not to uh, for the, all the benefits it offers. But then if you're a rural customer as well or, or county, you know, kind of rural water district type, uh, I would look at a booster pump as well. So there you go. That's the simplest and easiest way to increase the efficiency of your RO multiple times and decrease that wastewater ratio by a ton. Oh, and one other thing, because the membrane works faster and more efficiently when you increase the pressure, you can often drop the, the, the membrane down from a 75 gallon a day to maybe a 50 gallon a day. You can save some money there too, because you're going to increase how well this performs. Your wastewater ratio is now, you know, maybe you only need to push through, uh, you know, three gallons of water for every gallon that you make. So a 50 gallon a day is more than enough to fill up your tank. Okay. Have any questions about this section? Let us know down below. All right, so let's talk about the water that comes out of the RO taps, okay? Um, all ROs clean the water really, really well, right? They take everything out of the water. That's the problem. They don't differentiate between what's good for us and what's bad for us in the water. And so it can remove things like the calcium and the magnesium and, and the original electrolytes, right? The minerals that we need in our water to just benefit our bodies, to make the water more hydrating, more digestible. There's all sorts of benefits that those minerals contain. And when we strip them out, that all goes away. Now, more and more people are realizing that, right? So there's been this just incredible explosion of, of options for remineralizing your water. Uh, some of them are really good. Some of them are not. In some ways, it's kind of like chloramine is for water companies. It's great for them because it stays in the water and it, and it cleans better. But it's worse for us as drinkers because we can't filter it out as easily. So um, a lot of the stuff that you're going to find out there in the remineralization sphere is kind of the same way. Some of the, the solutions, if you will, are great for the RO companies and not so much for what the water is in your glass. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. Not only does a, a demineralized water, what, not only is that not healthy for us to drink, it also just causes some issues with, with RO water in general. Um, a demineralized water that heads into the tank ends up being um, pretty stale tasting. Uh, it's, it's very aggressive, so it pulls those flavors out of the tank. You end up with a little bit of a metal-y or a rubbery kind of flavor to it. Uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have a good feel on the palate, okay? Uh, the, the taste is pretty bad. Um, that's why a lot of those systems, which we'll talk about in a, in a little bit, have add-on uh, stages after the tank. It's simply to improve the flavor of the water. Um, it's not improving the health of the water, just, just improving the flavor. So if you, can, if you can fix those problems before the water gets to the tank, you're in a much better situation because you not only are getting a healthier water, but the flavors are improved as well. Uh, and you can eliminate a lot of the stages that you'd otherwise have to pay for. So how are RO systems addressing the problem or RO companies addressing the problem? Um, on the low end, you have things that are called calcite cartridges. Um, really cheap, inexpensive form of calcium. It's not really a form that we would recommend using. Uh, it's not what you'd find in a supplement or anything like that. Um, but for them, it's great because it allows them to say, hey, the TDS, the part per million level of our minerals has gone up in the water and we've remineralized the water. Technically it's true, but it's really not gonna add any benefits for you other than an improvement in flavor. Um, that's about the only noticeable difference that you'll find. As you get higher up the spectrum, you'll find things like this remin here that use a much different blend of minerals. It's a much healthier form of calcium. It also adds in magnesium and potassium and some, some sodium, some natural sodium as well. Uh, those are the four big electrolytes uh, that we all need and this, this contains all of them. Uh, it also does some things with the pH. It improves the pH balance of the water. It improves the antioxidant capability of the water. Um, so it's, as much, it's a substantially better way to improve your RO water than the cheap add-on stuff that, that you'll find all over Amazon right now. You'll pay more for this, but you're gonna get the benefits uh, and it's gonna last a lot longer as well than a lot of the stuff has that just snaps on top like this. So um, the other thing to understand is if you, if you don't have an RO yet and you're looking for a solution, find one that has the mineral option plumbed in. Uh, on these kinds, you're gonna see that it's, it's usually after the membrane, okay? It's like the last thing the water touches before it hits your glass, or maybe there's a, a calcium, or I mean a, a carbon cartridge on here as well. But if you can get one that has the minerals plumbed in prior to the water going to the tank, it's way better. Um, there's a function of time. The longer the time is where the water is, is sitting with the minerals, where the minerals are steeping in the water, the better they're going to perform. It just absorbs it. It dissolves the minerals better, so you get a higher point part per million, a higher TDS level. <clears throat> it helps the flavor. It gives you the antioxidant benefits, the pH. It's just, it's just a much more robust water that way. Right. So that's the first thing you should look for, is if you can find one that's, that's plumbed in. 
Um, if you don't, you already have an RO and you're looking for just a solution for, for what you have now, you can snap this on at the back end as well to where it's one of the last stages the water touches. You just have to know there's a little bit of a trade-off, right? You're not gonna get those same TDS levels necessarily that you would when the water was going through at a slower speed. Okay, but, and if you can do that, if you can get the minerals prior to the tank, well, now you've also improved the quality of the water that's sitting in the tank. It's not aggressive, it's not pulling the bad tastes out. Um, and that typically means you can eliminate a lot of this, the additional stages on top of the system uh, because you don't have the bad flavors in the tank. So you can get rid of that carbon that final polishing filter or carbon filter on the top. Um, and you can just go straight away, mineral water into the tank, mineral water to your faucet, and it works great. So that's the thing to think about when it comes to mineralizing your water. Are you looking to just add some TDS to it, or do you actually want to make the water much healthier uh, and better to consume? Because the, as you compare and contrast the options out there, you're going to find a whole lot of this and not very many of these. Uh, these are pretty rare because they're a little more of a, of a high-end item, okay? Uh, so the big takeaways, you find a blend, find pH and antioxidant improvements, and find a way to get it installed prior to your tank. If you can get that stuff taken care of, you're going to have a much more uh, healthy water coming out of your RO than you otherwise would. So again, any questions, let us know down below. All right, let's talk about the last couple of aspects to this. That is uh, stages and maintenance. Both of them are pretty related. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll kind of talk about them in conjunction with each other. So what do I mean by stages? Well, a lot of companies you're going to find out there, a lot of the marketing material will talk about an eight stage or a nine stage or 12 or 14, right? And they give you the impression that the more stages, the, the better performing that RO system is going to be. And in most cases, that is not true. Um, at most of those stages that they've added on are either kind of a game they play and how they count the water or the places the water passes through. So a pump would be a stage. Well, that's not helping the water in your glass, right? Uh, it, it's just a kind of a game to make, make us think bigger numbers equals better performance. Um, if you really understand how an RO system works, which you should after watching this video, uh, you'll know there's really only a couple things to focus on. Protect the membrane. Use a good sediment cartridge and a good carbon cartridge. And that means the membrane works out really well. If you can soften the water, even better, right? And if that's done, then just focus on getting a good mineral blend and, and a good remineralized water flowing into your tank. If you do that, you're not going to need any add-on polishing filters on the back end of it. You're not going to need any flavor enhancers. You're not going to need any of that kind of stuff. Um, and think about what that means from a space saving or a size, right? This is a pretty small model when you talk about stages. If you get those eight and nine stages that have UV lights, like, well, for one, why do you need a UV light? Or there's not bacteria in our city water, okay? If you're on a well, maybe, but that's a significant, or that's a very small number of people, right? It's not something that, that's needed across the board. Um, if you start adding that in the pump and another polishing filter and a mineral cartridge on top, I mean, you, very few cabinets have enough space to put all that stuff in. And then if you think of one more stage through that, what happens when it comes time to change the filters? It gets pretty difficult. It gets pretty costly too, because you get a lot of stuff to change. And every time you open one of these things up, it's full of water. Um, and that presents some challenges as well. So what we find happens is people stop maintaining it because it's difficult, it's time consuming, it's expensive. Uh, and we have a lot of people that have these kinds of systems that end up just purchasing a body system like this and snapping it into their, their tank and their faucet because they want an easier maintenance uh, process. That's why we recommend encapsulated filters because these things just unscrew like a light bulb and you put another one right back in. You're not taking these off full of water, having to dump it out, put more water in. And especially the membrane changes, these things are a pain because the gaskets have to fit correctly, it has to be lubricated right. Uh, if you don't get it seated correctly, you're gonna have issues. It's just gonna, the water's gonna bypass it. And it's hard to tell if you've done it right or if you've done it wrong. So again, find one that's encapsulated and makes it kind of a no-brainer. Um, that's what we would say from a long-term perspective. You know, RO systems are not something that you're just gonna, it's not like a pitcher you're storing in your fridge and you can buy a new one if you want. These are a more substantial investment. They're, they're plumbed into your home, right? So it's gonna be there a little bit longer. Get one that's good, that you're gonna maintain, that's, that's not gonna be a, a difficult process and an expensive process to keep for five, 10, 15, 20 years, because that's how long these things should last, no problem. Um, and that also means you need to look at it from the, which company or who am I buying this from? There's a lot of some, some kind of shady stuff happening behind the scenes with Amazon right now. And we've seen in the last few months that there's a lot of issues with supply chains and, um, and the, the kind of uncertainty there. 
So if you can find a company that's closer to home, find a company with people you can actually talk to, find a company that knows what they're talking about and can, can make sure they'll be around when you need um, some help if you do for installation or you need a part down the road or whatever it may be, okay? There, there are moving parts on these things and so sometimes things can fail. Sometimes a pump can, can stop working or whatever. Um, it's much easier to talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about than just a bot on Amazon. So uh, those are the things to consider. Think, think long-term, I guess, is the, the, the main gist of this section here. Think about what it's gonna cost and how much, difficult, how much difficulty it's gonna require to change filters and whatnot. And think about the long-term relationship in a sense that you're gonna have with this system in your home. So we hope this video has helped. As I've said several times, let us know down below. Our contact info is on the, on the video as well. Um, we're happy to help. If you have something or you already have an RO system you just need some help with, uh, pictures, and we can pretty much tell you what you're gonna need to do and how you're gonna need to replumb stuff or what your problem is. Uh, they're not that difficult once you understand the basic flow and function of these. So, uh, like I said, let us know if you have any questions and we'll be talking with you soon.